So far for our conditional stuff we were using conditional expression in this way but now we'll be using conditional statements using if or if else if. All right. So if before I use if I just define and declare a variable a with type number and I initialize the value uh, as 100 and then I give a condition here in the if block. So if a greater than 50 in that case print on console that a is greater than 50. All right. So that is a very simple if conditional block that we have added here and you see the output is a is greater than 50 right now if you want to have add another block which says that if condition is not true what should happen in that case you can add a else part of it so else console.log a is not greater than 50 right so if you run it again it will be printing a is greater than 50 because it is only uh, going through that part which is the first part because the condition is true now you make the value of a as 10 and it will give you the value as a is not greater than 50 all right so this is how we can use if and else if we don't give the else part it is if only and if we give the else part as well it is if and else right so now if you have multiple conditions to check you can have multiple if else is one inside other this is called nesting of if else Right. Otherwise, if you have only one variable for which you want to check multiple values, you can use switch statement. So the syntax goes like this switch in brackets. You give the variable for which you want to compare the values. So a and then you give the values in the cases that if the value of a is one. So case one and then colon in that case, do this action. So I'm printing on console that value is one for case one. All right. Similarly, I can have multiple cases here as many as you want. So I just copy and paste multiple times and I'll change the values here. So for one, it is, let's say this and then 10 and then 100 and then 1000. And I can also change the logging messages that I have used. So one, 10, 100 and 1000. And there is another option. You cannot give all the values here. So you can use default here, which means that if any of these above which you have used are not fulfilling the criteria it will always fall into this default block so here you can print for example value is something else or something other than what you have mentioned now since it is 100 it should type 100 only but you see the output is strange and it prints value is 100 then value is 1000 value is something else the reason is it goes into that block and then it keeps on executing the later statements as well right the problem with this is because we are not breaking the execution there. So we need to use the break statement here after every case, right? So when it is true, it should break. It should first go there and then break. It should not enter any other case. So if you add this, now you would see it only prints once, which is value equals 100, which is value equals 100. Right. Similarly, you can change thousand and it prints value is thousand. If you give 150, it says value is something else. Right. So that's how you can use conditional statements, which are if, if else and switch. Now, this is a very fundamental concept and you'll be using it very frequently while we would be doing automation using WebDriver IO and TypeScript. So in the next tutorial, we'll talk about loop statements.